Hey, my name is Jamie Aaron, and in today's lesson, we're going to talk about one of the most overlooked but essential skills in playing blues guitar, and that's rhythm guitar. Rhythm guitar is often overlooked in the blues because most of our blues guitar heroes were primarily lead players, and we want to focus on the soloing and all those great improvised pentatonic licks and lead lines. First off, if you're playing in a band, chances are 90% of the time you're going to be playing rhythm guitar anyway. So I'm going to show you some great examples of blues guitar rhythm ideas you can throw into your rhythm playing. But these ideas will also enhance what you do as a soloist by helping you understand the fretboard, the chord tones of the chords that you're playing over, as well as giving you some great chordal ideas you can throw into your solos. And by the way, if you'd like a PDF tab transcription of this lesson, please join me on Patreon where I have PDF transcriptions of a lot of my other YouTube lessons as well as exclusive video lessons and a monthly group lesson over Zoom. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna be playing a blues in the key of A, and the first example is gonna be fairly simple. We're really just gonna focus on a certain rhythm that's key in blues and jazz playing. This rhythm is called the Charleston rhythm, and it's associated with the Charleston dance of the 1920s. So here's the rhythm. I'll count out loud. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. So we're attacking on beat one and on the and of two. And if we apply it to a chord like this, a7 voicing, we get something like this. One and two and three, four, one and two and three, four. And a great way to practice your blues rhythm guitar playing is to play along with a jam track or one of your favorite recordings and just try to keep this rhythm consistent. It's got a syncopated feel because we're hitting a note on the and. One and two and three and four and. And that gives it this sort of forward motion sort of propels the rhythm forward so if we take it through a full blues we get something like this here's example one Keeping that consistent rhythm is important at first. Now eventually we're going to make this a little more interesting, add some variations and ornamentations, but just getting that basic Charleston feel when you're playing over a blues shuffle is super important. Here's example two. I'll go ahead and play it and then I'll break it down. All right, so in this example, we're taking a simple three note chord shape, and our rhythm is actually, in this case, we're gonna come in on beat two. One and two and, and we'll hold that second chord for the rest of the bar. One and two and three, four. So our first chord shape is gonna be an A6. Here's A R root, C sharp the third, and F sharp the sixth, or the 13th, if we're playing a seven in the chord. And you're gonna just take this, one and two and. and you're just going to take this shape and you're going to move it down a whole step or two frets on the end of two one and two and three four and when we move the shape down it becomes an a nine and you can put the root in for context if you want one and two and three four so this a nine this is g our flat seven b our nine and e is our fifth I like to slide. You can slide into that and slide back down. And you could do one pick attack, slide in and slide back down. That makes it a little more expressive. One and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, like that. So when I get to the four chord, I could just take the same shape and move it up to this little D box at the 10th and 12th fret. Same relationship, right? But what I'm going to do instead is play it as a bar on the first three strings between the seventh fret and fifth fret. It's the same three notes. But in this case, if I'm hanging out in this box, it means I don't have to move up the neck. I can stay in a similar position. Now 
Now for my five chord, I'm gonna move between the seventh fret and the ninth fret. Now I could do it once again up here, but I'm choosing to do it down here, just sliding with that first finger between the ninth fret and the seventh fret. And then for the five chord, last bar, I'll go back. Example three is gonna be a great shuffle rhythm that utilizes that Charleston. We're also gonna go back and forth between a chordal example and a little single note phrase that's gonna make it a little more interesting and give your ear something to grab onto. So check it out. So a couple things going on here. First off, for our one chord, I'm doing this little hammer on. So I'm playing an A7 just on these middle three strings. D string on the fifth fret, G string on the sixth fret, and B string on the fifth fret. So it's a three note chord. But I'm hammering on my middle finger. So I'm doing a bar here at the fifth fret, but I'm just almost instantly, when I get to that chord, I'm hammering on my middle finger on the sixth fret of the G string, which is that third of the chord. But when I get it like that, it's almost like an organ player or a piano player, and it just gives a bluesy quality to the chord. And you can practice your Charleston rhythm with that hammer on. And two, and three, four, and two, and three, four. So continue with this pattern, I go one and two and three and four and on beat four i'm playing a d chord even though we're still playing over an a the one chord of the blues this d chord is in the key and so it sounds okay to go back and forth so we got one and two and three and four and one so let me go back in the second bar to our original little hammer on pattern at the beginning of that measure one and two and three and four and one and two and three and then in bar two, we're gonna play this little single note phrase that's kind of a call and response with the chordal pattern. I'm sliding with my third finger from the seventh fret to the ninth fret on the A string. And then here's an A, the root, seventh fret of the D string. And then back to that ninth fret on the A string. So we get something like this, here it is slowly. So that's the basic pattern. So we're gonna do that pattern two times, which will be the first four bars of the 12 bar blues. Then when we get to the four chord, I'm gonna take this exact same hammer on shape and I'm gonna copy and paste up at the 10th fret. And there we get over D7. But when it comes time for that single note phrase, I'm gonna hop back to this single note phrase with the way we played it over the one chord because it's so grounded in the tonic of the key, it's so grounded in the one chord um, that I return to it there. So we got something like this when we get to the four chord in bar five. back to that pattern and then to our original over the one chord then when we get to the five chord I'm gonna do a little something different just gonna play an E7 one and two and three and four so on beat four I'm playing this E flat so we're starting with this E9 right that's our five chord little Charleston rhythm again one and two and three and and I'm using this E flat nine as like a stepping stone, a little chromatic sliding to get to my four chord. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And then back to my single note pattern. So coming from the five chord, one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Back to my little single note motif. And then I'm gonna do something a little different in bar 11. 
do this little pattern. You've heard this in a million songs. A7 to a D to this little shape, which is an A7. It's the root, the fifth, and the flat seven. So there's no third there. So we're gonna go up A7, D over an A. The bass is still playing an A to this little seventh shape back down and then a little walk up D that's the fifth fret of the A string sixth fret of the A string seventh fret of the A string and then for my final attack in this course of the blues on beat three I'm playing an E7 sharp nine Hendrix chord adding in that sharp nine for a little extra bit of tension so we got last two bars and normally I do this walk up first finger second finger third finger but because I'm going into this chord I'm gonna do first finger second finger slide the second finger into the E so it's all ready for the chord so here's example four and in this example we're going to be playing a delta blues inspired riff utilizing the pentatonic scale for melody in our guitar part so what we're going to do is we're going to take an a chord like this you're going to play an open a string and then do a bar on the second fret of the d string g string and b string then you're going to take your pinky and you're going to put it on the high e string fifth fret to start our melody note and the first thing we're going to do is just get comfy going back and forth between the fifth fret of the high E string and the third fret, which is the flat seven of the chord. And you're going to play all those other notes of the chord as well. But now you have a little rhythm here. But the really cool thing you can do is you can walk down this shape of the A minor pentatonic scale while holding the chord. The key here is that the top note of the melody is always going to be on top and as you move down, when I get to my melody note on the B string, I'm not going to play the high E string anymore, but I'm still going to play all these other notes. So if you wanted to walk down the scale, it's 5th fret on the high E string with all those other notes of the chord, 3rd fret of the high E string, then we're going to move to the B string, 5th fret and 3rd fret. And then we get to the G string, it's 5th fret, and I'm playing that with my pinky here, to the bar. You can come up with some really cool riffs and ideas. So here's the example that I've provided. So in this example, we're going to start with an open A on beat one, and then we're going to play a little chord cluster, fifth fret to the third fret and back on the high E string. One and two and three and four and. And then we're going to start our little descent on the third fret of the high E string and walk down the scale. So we get a pattern like this. Three, four, one. Four, one. So super slow. Fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret, third fret. Then moving to the B string. Fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret. And we'll hold it. To our four chord our low note is actually going to be the fifth of the chord it's going to be this a here at the seventh fret so we're going to play something like that this is a little d triad a which is the fifth of d there's d the root and there's f sharp which is the third and the 
pinky is going to go in the 10th fret of the high E string. And we're going to go between the 10th fret and the 8th fret. 10, 8, 10, 10, 10, 10 8. Then back to our original pattern. Then for our 5 chord, we're going to do what we did for the 4 chord. We're going to move your 1st finger, ninth fret of the D string. So we'll make this little E triad. Pinky's going to go on the high E string, 12th fret. And the pattern's just going to be 12, 10, 12. And I'm strumming all those together. 10, 12, 10. And if you want to throw in the low E string for some bass context, but I'm assuming that when I'm playing this, I'm going to be playing with a band and the bass player is going to be playing the root. So I might start my pattern here on the fifth. Then when I get to the four chord, I'll play that seventh fret of the D string and I'll go 10, 10, 8. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here for the one chord. Five, three, five. So from the walk down, five chord, four chord, one chord. Back to that pattern. And then for my turnaround, bar 12, I'm going to play a open E string, hammer on that open G to the first fret, G sharp of the third string, then an open E, and then a D, this is the third fret of the B string. And when I let those notes ring out together, I get the sound of an E7 chord. Let's do our walk down again. So one really important tip with this is with the A7 chord, one chord, you can walk down that whole pentatonic scale, A minor pentatonic. When you get to the four chord though, you can play these first couple of notes, but you can't play that F that's in a D minor pentatonic because it clashes with the F sharp that exists in a D7 chord. So when I'm playing the four chord, I usually just stick to those two notes. Then for my five chord, it's not gonna clash when you play the full E minor pentatonic scale over the E7 chord, because that note, that G, is in an E7 sharp nine. It doesn't rub our ears the wrong way. All right, here's our final example. This is a Freddie Green style four on the floor comping pattern. Now, if you're not familiar with Freddie Green, Freddie Green was the rhythm guitar player in the Count Basie Orchestra. He played a fat arch top unplugged and basically always played quarter notes in these sort of three note chord voicings. And he was felt more than he was heard, but it was really a crucial element to the Count Basie big band sound. And this kind of comping can be great, especially when you're playing without a full band, if you're accompanying a vocalist or playing by yourself and you wanna get more of kind of a swing feel to your blues. So let me play this example and then I'll break it down. So we're gonna start with an A7 chord, just this three note voicing. And I'm using my middle finger on the fifth fret of the low E string, my third finger on the fifth fret of the D string, and my pinky on the sixth fret of the G string. And you might be wondering why I'm not playing it like a bar, why I'm playing it like this. Well, when we walk up and down these chords, right, we're playing a chord on every beat, every quarter note of the song. So we're gonna do a lot of passing chords. We're kind of like a walking bass player for guitar. Our next chord is a B minor seven. Even though we're still playing it over an A7, B minor seven is in the key, so it works great as a little passing chord. 
makes it a lot easier to get to this chord if I keep fingers two, three, and four. And what's kind of cool here is I just slide my pinky up and I retain the shape of the second finger and third finger. And so they just kind of meet the other fingers here at the seventh fret. You can practice just going back and forth to these two chords. Then my next chord is going to be C diminished. And the way I'm going to get there is I'm going to take this B minor seven, I'm just going to move it up a half step. And then I'm going to lift off my third finger and put my first finger down on the seventh fret of the D string. And this is definitely a passing chord out of our key, but it's a great bridge between the chord we just played and the chord we're going to. And that takes me to this shape, which is an A chord, but with a C sharp in the bass, the third in the bass. So we have A7, B minor 7, C diminished. And the way I'm going to get from my C diminished to my A7 chord with the C sharp in the bass, or A over C sharp, is I'm going to move my pinky up one fret to the ninth fret of the G string. I'm going to put my third finger on the ninth fret of the low E string. I'm going to keep my first finger exactly where it is, seventh fret of the D string. So we get this cool little walking pattern. And this sort of sound gives you a great percussive sound when you're playing swing guitar, whether you're in a full band or playing solo guitar. So we're going to do a quick change to the four chord in bar two, and we're going to do that exact same pattern starting with a D7 here at the 10th fret. So our chords are D7, E minor 7, F diminished, and then D over F sharp. up the A7, up the D7, then we'll do A7 again, and for bar 4, let's take it backwards, A over C sharp, C diminished, B minor, and A7. So here's how the first four bars sound. About these three note voicings with this fingering you're really thinking of each string is like a train track and your fingers are the trains you want to keep those trains on the train tracks and for my strumming i'm just doing a downstroke really even attack downstroke then for the four chord we're going to switch to four note voicings on the next string set so we're going to start with a d7 like this which is going to take us to a C over D. This is just a bar over strings five through two. It's like a C triad with a D. So we call that D sus. To a D diminished. To a D seven. So you hear that melody. the chord so we're getting from this D7 shape to this D7 shape with the help of some passing chords and we can take it back down and then we'll go back to our one chord going up and then back down then E7 we'll do the same thing we did on the D7 chord E7 this is going to be a D over E to E diminished to E7. We'll do that just once going up. Then we'll do our D7 shape here, two frets lower. And then we'll walk up our A7 shape on the lower string set. But this time we'll end it with an A7. And for our turnaround, do an F9, but we're going to put a C in the bass instead. So you're just going to play an F9 like this, but take your 
middle finger, hop it over to the eighth fret of the low E string. So that's an F9 over C. And our five chord to finish out the chorus of blues will be this E9 with a B in the bass. So we got something like this. So this can be really great for playing soul guitar or playing with that kind of swing Freddie Green feel. It's also really great to understand how these voices can move within a chord, how you can play multiple chords over one chord. It might say A7 on your chart, or you might be playing just an A7, but there are a lot more shapes and voicings you can play in the span of one chord. So this is a great exercise for that. So all these examples are really great as practice tools to develop a rhythm vocabulary, the same way you develop a lead vocabulary. But the best rhythm players take elements from all these things and have them at their disposal in order to be reactive to the soloist and be able to play something that responds to what the soloist or the vocalist is doing. So you wanna have a good, consistent, solid rhythm feel, but also be able to throw in chord voicings that inject energy into the music and do different rhythmic variations and things that help respond to the music. Because when we're playing, especially when we're soloing or responding to a singer, it's great to have those things at our disposal to be reactive to the music. If you want to get the tab in PDF form, Please support me on Patreon. It's your support on Patreon that helps me continue making these videos. Thank you again. My name is Jamie Arendt, and I'll see you in the next video.